If you want to represent points on a plane, there's a normal way to do it, which is just to draw some axes, let's say an x-axis and a y-axis like this, give those um, labels. So we'll call this one the y-axis and this one the x-axis, and then to represent numbers by pairs of coordinates. So this point which I've just drawn there would get the coordinates 2, 1 because you reach it from the origin, this thing here, by going two units across and one unit up. And our ordinary sets are not suitable for representing those coordinates because as we discussed before, the set 2, 1 and the set 1, 2, those sets are equal. But the point that you get by going two units across and one unit up is different to the point you get by going one unit across and two units up. They're two distinct points in the plane. So in order to represent these coordinates mathematically, we need a different kind of construction. And that kind of construction is called an ordered pair. The way we're going to define an ordered pair is not by saying directly what it is, but rather by describing its properties. So if we have any two objects, x and y, and I don't just restrict myself to numbers here, uh, any kind of mathematical object, then we can form an ordered pair which we write like this with pointy brackets. And the defining property of ordered pairs is as follows. If you have two ordered pairs, x, y, and z, w, then they are equal if and only if the first entries are equal and the second entries are equal. So in this notation here, the pair x, y is equal to the pair z, w, if and only if x equals z and y equals w. So that's the kind of property we would need for describing points on a plane or coordinates on a map. Now you might wonder what these things actually are. I mean, we've given a, a definition of ordered pairs that describes what they do, but isn't there some way we could actually construct these directly? Well, I mean, you can do this. You can do this in set theory. Um, there is a clever definition called the Kuratowski definition of ordered pairs. If you want to know more about that, then you can look at the part of the lecture notes for this video, which has a link to somewhere where this is discussed. But unfortunately, the um, proving the definition really works the way you want it to requires a little bit more set theory than we're going to do in Math 5. So in Math 5, you should just consider ordered pairs as being defined by this property and not worry too much about what they actually are. And of course, we won't restrict ourselves to ordered pairs, um, just to ordered pairs. We'll also think about ordered triples like x, y, z, like this, which would have a similar property, except that for ordered, um, when the two ordered triples are equal, if they have the same first coordinate and the same second coordinate and the third, same third coordinate. So this is our definition of ordered pairs. And it enables us to define the thing which gives this video its title, which is the Cartesian product. So if you have two sets, A and B, then the Cartesian product of A and B, which we write as A and then a multiplication symbol, then B, so we'll pronounce that as A cross B or A times B, that's defined to be the set of all ordered pairs where the first element of the ordered pair comes from the set A and the second element of the ordered pair comes from the set B. So in symbols, the Cartesian product A cross B is the set of all ordered pairs A, B, where little a comes from big A and little b comes from big B. So to take an example of this, if we had, let's say, A was equal to the set containing 0 and 1, and B was equal to the set containing 1 and 2, then the Cartesian product, A cross B, would have all the ordered pairs where the first element of the ordered pair came from A and the second element came from B. So the first element could be 0, in which case the second element is 1, or the second element is 2, and the first element could also be 1, in which case the second element could be 1, or the second element could be 2. So those are the four elements in the Cartesian product A cross B. And in fact, in general, you can see that the size of A cross B, or the cardinality of A cross B, will just be the size of A times the size of B. Since you can pick the first element in the ordered pair freely from A, then you can pick the second element of the ordered pair freely from B. All right, so just as we defined, um, or at least we um, described, 
ordered triples and so on will do the same for Cartesian products. So A cross B cross C for three sets A, B and C would mean the set of all ordered triples A, B, C where A was in A and B was in B and C was in C and so on.